Question number four. It's a quadratic inequality question. It wants to know what's the solution of the inequality x squared minus x minus 6 less than 0. This isn't actually that bad of a question to answer if you know how to uh, graph quadratic equalities, quadratic equations. So let's take x squared minus x minus 6 and we want that to be less than 0. Well we can factor this. I usually draw my parentheses first and we want it to be less than 0 of course. So we have x squared so we know we got x and x there. We have 6 so we want two numbers to multiply to negative 6 and we want them to add to negative 1. That would be 3 and 2 because 2 times 3 multiplied to 6 and then if we have the negative 3 and positive 2 that means that plus 2x and minus 3x give us a minus x. So this is the factored form. Okay, and what this means is that if we graph this, you know, there's your y-axis, there's your x-axis, and we go out 1, 2, and we go back 1, 2, 3. This parabola is going to open upwards because the sign in front of the x squared over here, that's positive, so it's going to open upwards and it's going to look, I don't know, it's going to look something like this. Right? That's what it's going to look like. And the area where this parabola is negative, where it's less than zero, right? This part here, less than zero, this less than zero part, and you know, this part up here, less than zero, is basically saying, where does it dip below the x-axis? And it dips below the x-axis precisely, there's negative three, positive 2. It dips below the x-axis precisely from negative 3 to positive 2. So we want negative 3. x has to be greater than negative 3 and x also has to be less than positive 2. And I read that directly, you know, I read this directly from the graph right here because I know that this region is below the x-axis, it is negative. Okay, that's how we solve that problem. Next up, we have which expression is equivalent to i to the 55th power? Okay, and there's a nifty little shortcut that you can do, uh, that you can use to solve this problem. We know that i to the first power is equal to i because anything to the first power is equal to itself. We know that i squared is negative 1. i to the third is i squared times i, so that's negative i. So I just took i squared, negative 1, multiplied it by another i, and I got negative i. And i to the fourth is negative i times another i, or i squared times i squared. Either way, it's plus 1. So you have negative 1 up here and plus 1 here, right? So when we have i to the 55th, if we divide 55 into 4, can okay, you see why I'm going to do that in a second? Oops, 4, right? And we're going to divide 55 by 4. The remainder will tell us which one of these we're going to use. So 4 goes into 5 once. 4 times 4 is 8. Oh, whoa, excuse me, that's an error. Edit, undo that. 4 times 1 is just 4. Uh, 5 minus 4 is 1. We bring down the 5. We got 5 here. Now 4 goes into 15 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. Okay, I subtract this and I get a remainder of 3. So 13 remainder of 3. This is the critical part, remainder of 3. The remainder of 3 tells us that the answer here is going to be negative 1. And the reason for this is, this is just using properties of exponents. If I have i to the 55th, that's equal to i to the 4th power raised to the 13th power, because 4 times 13, right? And then to that, we're going to add i to the 3rd power. Right, so when you add all these exponents up, you have 
i to the 52nd here, i to the 52nd times i to the third, and that's i to the 55th. Okay, but notice that this part here, this part that is i to the fourth to the thirteenth, this just turns into one. Right? So it's really one times i to the third, and i to the third, as we said here, is negative i. Okay, so that's the trick. All right, problem number six. What is the translation? that maps the function f of x equals x squared minus 1 onto the function g of x equals x squared plus 1. Okay, so basically what we have here is a parabola shifted down one unit. That's this one here. This is the parabola shifted down one unit. So let me draw some axes. There's the y-axis. There's the x-axis. That's minus 1. So we have some parabola that is shifted down one unit. There it is. Okay, and we want to know what what translation how translation you know how can we move this thing such that it is now laying exactly on top of x squared plus one, and x squared plus one would be there's plus one, right? And x squared plus one is going to look like this. It's going to be another parabola. It's just going to be up one like this. Well, to get from point A to point B, we had to go one, two units. We had to move up two units. We did not move left or right two units. We just moved up two units. So that means that the translation in the x direction is zero, right? So it's not this one and it's not this one because the translation in the x direction is one and negative one here. So it's zero and the translation in the y direction is positive two. So that leaves only this. Translation zero two. Okay, we'll see you on the next question.